What is up, Madden NFL fans? Welcome to today's video. And in today's video, you're just watching some Mutt gameplay. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Madden 15. And uh, I want to talk about today's topic is all about the tackling cone, what you guys think about that. And I want to talk about um, kind of my opinion on it, what it looks like, and, and kind of what it is. So we've seen some images. If you guys have been watching the gameplays I've been posting on the uh, description of every video I've been posting lately, uh, you guys can see all the Madden 25 game or Madden 15 gameplay that I could find, and I've been watching those uh, religiously at this point and just kind of dissecting them and, and, and looking at them as for hours, uh, trying to find flaws with everything that they're doing and trying to find different ways that we could, you know, maybe start to kind of build a scheme and kind of start to build kind of on the physics of the game and um, today's video we're just going to mainly focus on the idea that the main thing with the tackling cone and the main thing with Madden 15 I think is what they're trying to do is they're trying to appeal to almost all areas of the game now or almost all areas of the game players now what I mean by that is Everything that they have added to the game, you can turn off. So the tackling cone, you can turn that off. Or um, I'm sure there's other features like the cameras. You can turn the vision camera to the one that you want. You don't have to just use the, the player lock defensive camera that they've added. They've added so much more content to the game to make it usable for the people. And I think that's a huge stepping stone for the game because one of the biggest problems with Madden 25 is you kind of have to be really good to stop something that you sh shouldn't really have to be good to stop and what I mean by that is you know I get questions all the time how do you stop the run how do you stop the run how do you stop the run and it's this basic running plays that really aren't that good in terms of skill to call it's like you you know what uh, I hope you don't take that the wrong way but what I mean by that is you don't have to be a tournament player to know that the buck sweep is the best run in that 25. You don't have to be, you know, a tournament player either to know that the strong close halfback off tackle is a very good run as well. See, I hope you guys uh, don't take that the wrong way, but what I, you know, I hope you get what I'm saying here is that for Madden 15 to really kind of take it to the next level and kind of appeal to all areas, what I feel like they're trying to do is they're trying to take the game and basically have the computer play a lot smarter and what do you guys think about that now what I mean by that is I was watching uh, a video the other day by uh, some uh, a friend of mine or not or a friend of mine that's a friend of his so what I mean by that is it's a guy that Kilo is friends with and I consider me and Kilo uh, kind of acquaintance friends we uh, I've talked to him a couple times about the game and basically he uh, had favored the video so I checked it out and they were basically mocking uh, the EA game changers community and uh, I wouldn't go that far I don't quite know enough about the game changers community to make a whole lot of judgment calls on them uh, I just I just don't know a whole lot about it I know that I got a couple of friends that are in it uh, you know Zan and Gibbs and Falls and all those guys are in it so and I don't I've never heard anyone question the fact of whether Zan or files or Gibbs should be in it but what I've heard is that they question you know guys like uh, some of the new additions that don't know haven't been as much haven't been around as much and I don't want to get into all that debate but basically in the video they talked about you know kinda the frustration uh, with potentially uh, basically being able to hit X and have everything almost done for you and what they meant by that was the new pass rush on the game is going to basically feature the ability to basically when you get locked into a block you can hit a button and you're gonna get disengaged and that mean, meaning what they mean by that is it's not gonna take a whole lot of skill to get pressure on the quarterback because you can just play as a defensive lineman and just get crazy pressure with the new pass rush moves now I, I see that point uh, to an extent. I think this goes back to the tackling cone and kind of where I wanted to talk with this uh, little talk that I'm doing today. But basically what I wanted to get at was how in the world are they going to fix the problems with Madden 25? I was just talking to a guy on Twitter uh, earlier today and we were talking, you know, he's talked about the, I the idea that Madden 25 was just flat out pathetic of a game. 
And I don't want to say it's pathetic. I mean, it, it's made some strides. There are certain areas where I think it could, I, I, it definitely under, under uh, kind of went through the process and just did not deliver. Uh, but I, I do agree that Madden 15 has to really kind of take it to the next level in order to overshadow what Madden uh, 25 was because you had the whole and I obviously I think we all can agree that Madden 25 was rushed I think a lot of people can agree with that I think Madden 15 uh, has even been people are taking that that will be a rush game as well just because with all the new launches that they've been doing they just didn't have time to devote to development and things like that so but what do you guys think about the, the, the what I'm trying to get at is they're making the computer smarter so that you can't abuse it and um, I think there's a lot of power in that I think it's a lot more of a step in the right direction than we think because I because in order in order to be great at Matt you have to be able to deal with a user player you know and in order to be really good in the tournament scene, there's a lot of users, there's a lot of chess match, there's a lot of, you know, having, for example, I mean, you're seeing in this game, I'm using this motion snap little slant route, and, uh, you know, basically just kind of spamming the same play over and over again and just making good progression reads to score. And um, hopefully... You guys are seeing my point with this is what they're basically saying is that you're not going to be able to do this anymore. Now, I don't necessarily know what that means for the game. I know that we're going to talk about it a lot more in the next video. We're going to talk about the defensive, uh, the new feature where they basically tell you what your opponent called the play before. We're going to talk about why that is uh, somewhat good and bad for the game. Uh, but what do you think about the, the, as far as the... The game as, it set, as a whole, from what I'm seeing, is trying to appeal to more beginner players. You know, the tackling cone is to teach them how to tackle. The pass rush move is to teach them how to disengage from blocks and actually have a good time playing on the D-line because their statistics show that 70% of people play on the D-line. And so I, I guess what I'm getting at with this is does that make the game bad? Does it make it good? Does it even mean anything? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below because I'm pretty interested to hear uh, what you guys have to say about this because I think that that's a big time change that we're seeing. Now, one other thing uh, on a note here. Let's talk about some problems with Madden 25 and compare it to what they're doing in Madden 15. So one of the problems in Madden 25 is run defense. How have they kind of fixed that up? Well, they haven't been talking about it a lot, but they have supposedly given new pursuit angles. And I wish I would have ran the ball more in this gameplay to show you what I'm talking about. But basically, if I have a good running back, even if I don't have a good running back, if I have a, a somewhat fast and elusive running back, I can pretty much gain 10 yards a pop almost every time. Because of the way the pursuit angles are, I can just run halfback stretch, halfback stretch, halfback stretch, halfback stretch, halfback stretch, halfback stretch, half stretch, over and over and over again. And and they just can't stop it. Defense can't stop it. And, you know, we've seen that with a couple of videos that people have done about how to beat the computer in solo challenges and how to do X, Y, and Z and things like that. And basically, it's all about using outside runs. You know, it's, it's buck sweep. It's it's, you know, outside zone. It's all sorts of different types of moves that you can do to, to counter what the computer does because the computer does the same thing every time. And I like where they're going with it because it, it adds a certain amount of unpredictability about what's going to happen. And I think that's huge for an NFL game because you don't know what they're going to do pre-snap. I mean, I don't know if you're going to run a cover three. I, I can educate my guess. And I can say, okay, if you line up in a cover three look, then you're probably running cover three. But that doesn't mean that they have to run that. And like I said, I think that Madden is taking a step in the right direction with these features. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to make 
bad or worse or beginner players, they're trying to teach them the basics that they won't get when they play guys like, you know, what they play guys like Masta Chappy or uh, Zan or Gibbs. All the basics that we take for granted, you know, they're the beginner player has no clue on. It's like I've answered some questions over the course of my uh, channel this year where over and over again people will ask me like the weirdest questions that I don't even I don't even think about. You know, like how did you hot route that fast? Or how did you you know, how did you what playbook do you use or what this, what's that? And I'm like, you know, it doesn't really matter what playbook you use, you know, they, you can run every playbook effectively. And that's one of the purposes of Scheme of the Week is to show you that every playbook has and can be effective. But I guess what I'm getting at is, do you think that it's a good thing that EA is appealing to beginner players, and thus, because they're appealing to beginner players, they're going to make the community better because those beginner players are going to eventually be tournament players. Does that make sense at all? And and I hope it. I hope you guys are trying to starting to see kind of where I'm going with what I'm trying to get at here because. I think it's a big deal that uh, a lot of times as, you know, Madden gamers and things like that in this community, there's a lot of jerks. I mean, there is a lot of jerks. And I've been watching, I've been kind of watching the community shift, basically. And basically what's happening, from what I can see, is that they're shifting from a tournament-style community to a basically a mutt and fantasy kind of community. And it's why you've seen guys like ScoMo and Slump and the Mutt Crew and Mutthead TV and Clickwood and all those guys are growing so fast. And it's awkward to me because I'm like, you know, they're not necessarily the best players. And I'm, that's not a shot at them. It's just a fact, you know. It, how, many, how, how many times have you guys seen Problem or how many guys even know who Problem is at this point in the year? Problem's the greatest player of all time. He's he's the best mad guy out there. But Problem isn't the guy that's, you know, on the cover. Or he's not the guy that's, you know... And I, I think that that's a shift in the, in the culture of the game more so than anything. And I hope it's a shift in the in the right direction. Um, some, some, some would say it's not. And I would say to an extent it could be shifted. But, you know, others would say that it's a good thing because it makes the community as a whole better. Uh, you know, you it's it's sometimes better to have 500 average players than 300 tournament style players, and I don't I don't quite disagree with that statement, and I don't quite agree with it 100 percent either way. I kind of go both ways with it, and I know that that's a kind of tough topic for you guys to kind of go off of. But basically, I think that what Man 15 is going to do, although we kind of say that it's appealing to beginner players, is it's going to distinguish. I think even more so the advanced players than the beginner players. For example, the tackling cone. Most people don't need the tackling cone to tackle. Uh, most people are, are, are skilled enough players. But those players that are just getting the game that are playing on the safety, they don't know how to tackle. They hardly know how to pass rush. So if you're, if you're on this, as far as like, if you're consistently practicing the tackle cone and, 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 and working on the timing of it, you're going to get better. And and I think that that's a huge draw to Madden 15 as opposed to a negative. Even though it's going to be easier for bad players to be good, it's still going to be they're not going to be they're not going to beat a freaking you're not going to see a guy like um, for example, you're not going to see a guy that's coming onto the game right now and just getting mad at the team. That's his first game. You're not going to see him beat S. Gibbs or Z. Farrells or any of those guys. You're not going to see that. You're going to see him struggle the majority of those games. And the reason is because he's just not as advanced. We all have the same tools. And what separates the advanced community from the beginner community is that the advanced community just uses the tools better. It's just the way it is. And I think that a lot of times we get it we get it mixed up and we try to say, "Oh, well, I don't I shouldn't be tackled because I'm an advanced player." You sh you don't have to be a, a, a beginner player to be tackled. And I think that there's a lot of power uh, in that statement. And I hope that you guys really kind of take away uh, what I'm getting at. But I'm wrapping up here, guys. I don't have 
uh, a whole lot more else to say, but basically on the tackling cone, I want to simply suggest to you that it is a step in the right direction because it's going to teach people the basics of the game. It's going to give them a foundation to play as opposed to just sitting them out there on their own and making them simply just have to go back and forth. I think that's what the tackling cone as a whole will provide. And I think that it's a great addition. And I'm glad, though, that I'm also glad that you could turn the tackling cone off. And I think that that's a huge thing about the, the game that a lot of people miss is that you could turn it off anyway, so it doesn't matter in the big picture. So, with that in mind, guys, uh, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, this gameplay is wrapping up here. Uh, I want to quickly mention one more thing before I get out of here, and uh, that is my uh, Twitter account. Now, if you guys have not been following me on Twitter, uh, I would highly suggest that to you just to get you more involved with me outside of YouTube. And uh, I think that it's a great opportunity for me because it allows you to ask your questions. One of the things I really want to do is I want to take your questions and make them into a video. Um, one of the things some guys that I know, some friends of mine do, is they'll do things like Mailbag Mondays or things like that that allow you the opportunity to, uh, to basically, you know, ask your questions and then have your questions be made into a video format so that you can get better at the game and uh, again I don't quite I don't quite have the following amount to have like seven billion questions it's just not ple uh, plausible right now uh, because the way my videos are working and the way that I'm on such a rigid schedule of having to post you know 15 billion videos a day so that I can keep up with everything I want to talk about and I really hope that you guys are still with me here, but but basically when you hit me up on Twitter, it's an instant message. Uh, well, it acts like that, and so I get it, and I can just respond to Twitter because it's quick, it's short. So if you're not doing that, you're not following me on Twitter, uh, do that. And then that brings up the last topic because I forgot that this game actually ended up going into overtime here. But the last topic I want to talk about is a topic that I talked covered in my top five tips, and I think that this is kind of the future of where Madden's going. And uh, I think that I, I, I really do want to go on record here uh, because I think that a lot of people sometimes get me kind of misquoted or uh, kind of misunderstand me. There is no question that Madden 25 has a lot of things that they could have improved on. And I'm not saying that Madden 25 was a, you know, was a, uh, a flawless game. But I'm also not saying that Madden 10 or Madden 12 or Madden 11 or Madden 09 or Madden 6 or NFL 2K6 or NFL 2K7 or whatever you want to put there in that category. I am definitely not saying that those games are flawless either. I'm saying that Madden 25 was better than Madden 13. Madden 13 was better than Madden 12. Madden 11 was better than Madden 10. And some people will disagree. Some people will say, oh, well, Madden 10 was better than Madden 11. Well, yeah, but was Madden 10 better than Madden 12? Was Madden 10 better than Madden uh, 13 and Madden 25? And uh, what, I get, what I'm getting at here is that there's a progression. And you have to get involved with the community to see the progression. And one of the things that's a huge progression is that in Madden 10, I believe that there was a such thing as a spy blitz. And there were several different nano blitzes and different tactics in the game that was exploiting the AI. Which we all say, oh, well, you don't want to exploit the AI. But then we go around, we turn right around and say that, oh, well, Madden, Madden 10 was the best, or Madden 11 was the best. Because you couldn't exploit the AI in those games. It's just a, such a lie. It's such a stupid, ignorant statement that just gets me really upset. But um, I, I, I do think Madden 15 is going to be the best Madden of all time. And that's a, that's a bold statement, but it shouldn't be that bold because it should be the best Madden of all time. But I really do. I think that this Madden is going to be really, really good. Uh, there's a lot of features that they're adding in. And the thing that I like about all the features that they're adding in is that it's all geared towards making the gameplay better and improving the community as a whole. And uh, I think that's the big part about this. So uh, with all that in mind, guys, that's what I've got for you today. I hope that you guys stuck with me the whole 20 minutes. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay. It was a little longer, uh, but I do hope you did enjoy it. And we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for your time, and we'll see you guys later.